tonight from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Phillip Rivers and the Indianapolis Colts. The rain is falling, the fans are soaked, but here's the bottom line. We've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. There's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. They left in the middle of a cold night in 1984, but the Colts are back, and we're underway in Baltimore. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Colts ready to go to work here offensively, and it is Phillip Rivers, their veteran quarterback and longtime charger, who will be under center. One way you become the all-time leading passer for your team is pure talent, and Phillip Rivers has plenty of that. But there's also dedication to your craft and the willingness to get better all the time. Phillip Rivers has a van set up with a driver so that when he goes to and from practice, he's able to watch tape and find ways to improve his mechanics each and every day. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Marlon Mack, his first carry of the game. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Hines. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Naheem Hines, the ball carrier. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. On first and 10, Rivers. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Second and six at the 50-yard line. Set. Black the 
Rivers now from the 50. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 40. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. First down, Rivers. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And he'll go down at the 28. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. They'll run on first down. It's Hines. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. No score after one on EA Sports. Second and eight. They run with Hines. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll run for it with Hines. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And this crowd into it early. Their guys stand tall on the opening drive of the football game. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll set up the throw from the gun. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted, picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker, and nearly a touchdown as they finally stop him down at about the three-yard line. And that pick just sets him up beautifully right down near the goal line. I remember being in a defensive meeting back when I was in college, and our defense coordinator says, we're going to call this be-who-you-are defense. D-linemen, you play the run. Linebackers, be aware of anything. And secondary, you play the pass. That way, you're all set, ready for whatever they put out there.
They're quite a turn of events. This is first and goal from the three. Looking to run with Mack. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. To me, that's a terrific run on first and goal of the three. They got two yards. I'd line right back up and give it to him again. From the two now, second and goal. They'll try to run with Hines. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And this time he is in. Yes. Naeem Hines taking it in as his guys are on the board first here tonight. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Now the try here for the extra point. The extra point. And this is good to make it 7 0 Indy. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Returning it, Justice Hill. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to the 23-yard line. The Ravens take over first and 10. At their own. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. And they'll begin by running the option. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. Three-yard loss the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. You've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside.
So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. A first down throw here for Rivers. Catch made here by Campbell. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. A good rally to the football. Keeps him to only a yard in its second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big, but in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert, but right now looking at a third and three. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. receiver but it'll be second down and that throw behind his man he missed him incomplete rivers incomplete on first down here's second and ten throwing again rivers caught left side by hilton and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Queen. He's at the 50. And a potential turning point as they'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. Intercepted. The Ravens take over first and 10 at the 42-yard line. After the interception, here's Jackson. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. At the Colts' 44-yard line. Now Justin Tucker. Justin he has Tucker hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is.
And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Final play of the half, Rivers. Looking for Campbell downfield. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half from the veteran, Philip Rivers. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Returning it, Hill. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. But they run the option as Jackson will hand it to Ingram. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Jackson running again. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage so they didn't lose anything. But you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Second down, Ingram. And down to the 44, five yards that time. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. 
from the gun on third down. Jackson rolling to his right. He can run for it, and he will. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. On third and short, not only did he get away from the rush and pick up a first down, he picked up a whole lot more than that. And how did he get it done? Evaded the rush, kept his poise, and then how about him directing traffic as he moved downfield to pick up extra blockers? A really nice run. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. An option run with Ingram. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Justin Houston. It's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. On second and nine, Jackson. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Intercepted by the Colts. That was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. They begin the drive on the ground with Mack. Derek Wolf there on the tackle. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Campbell making the catch. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Two yards is all they'll get on the position. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try to take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. First and 10 at the 44-yard line.
One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. From the gun, it's Jackson throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Mark Ingram there, and that'll bring up second down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw again. Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards there. First down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Oh, no, he lost the football. And I believe the Colts have recovered. Yes, they have. Jackson on the keeper. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. On second down and four, Rivers. He's got Jack Doyle. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 11 yards there, first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it, and they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Second and 12, Rivers. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. It's a four-yard pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. On third down, Rivers. And this is going to be incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. And he missed it. 
It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Keeps the score. Colts seven. Ravens nothing. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 7-0, 2.22 on the clock. Deuces wild. And the missed field goal gives them new life as they come up in a one-score game on first and 10. That one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. Caught by Snead over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. He'll buy some time right. He's going to take off with it. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. He's going to drop this underneath to Ingram. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. He's back to throw. That's taken in by Duvernay. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Gosh, given the time and the short game, would he have been better off just dropping that? Yeah, when you look at the clock, you think so. But it's hard to get a receiver to drop a football. They're trained to catch everything. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Throwing now is Jackson. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And finally, taken down at the 15. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. Now Jackson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Jackson to throw. He's going to let it fly. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. Doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 at their own 42. A run by Mack to start the drive. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. Yeah. 
This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They go right back to Mack. And across midfield, he goes into Raven territory. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. third down a run by Mack and he is going to have the first down and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they will stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game and that should be it. Tonight. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And not all W's are created equal, CD, and this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did. But the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense obviously stuffed to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. Well, you know what they say. It's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket. And that's what they've got going forward. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Baltimore, good night, everybody.